Uh, so let's get your Bibles out and um, uh, yeah, get your Bibles out. Let's be turning to uh, to Jeremiah, if you would. Jeremiah chapter 18. And I want to talk a little bit just quickly about um, God's purpose for us and um, how he's called us and what he's called us to and what we're meant to be doing and, and all of that stuff. Because when we're in the world, when our natural selves grow up and we think, what will I be? What will I do? What will I accomplish? What do I want in life? How do I achieve things? Um, who am I going to be? And we come to the Lord and we realize, well, first that we've been made new. So who I was trying to be and who I, what I was trying to achieve and all of those things don't really matter anymore. Now it's about what does God want me to do? What does God want me to achieve? So we're going to talk about some of those things today. You're turning to Jeremiah 18. It says, uh, there's a little story here, <clears throat> a story to illustrate basically the Lord's will for us. It, this, this passage illustrates a bunch of things, but that's one. So Jeremiah 18, verse 1, the word which came to Jeremiah, he's a prophet, um, from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, guy that does pottery. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. So he's spinning something up with the clay. And the vessel that, uh, that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So it got messed up somehow. And he, uh, and he made another vessel. So he just completely changed it as it seemed good to the potter to make it. So he's making something, it got messed up, uh, and then he just made it into something else. <clears throat> and verse five, and, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, so talking about God's people, Israel as a nation here in the Old Testament, and all that they've been through and all that he's doing for them and, and, and them having been damaged through their sin and through their disobedience and all of that, uh, that the Lord God is the one who can fix it. And he said, oh, house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, as this potter has just done that you just witnessed? Uh, the thing was damaged and he made something completely new out of it. Um, saith the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter, potter's hands, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. So Israel in this passage was the clay, but also we are the clay and everything is really the clay because everything is in the Lord's control. And so we can glean from this that the Lord is in control and whatever the Lord's purpose for us, whatever type of vessel we're meant to be, we will be. And it's not up to us, it's up to him. Um, and in, out of this passage, we can, we can understand now that we're, we're in the New Testament and the experience that, uh, that, that we're familiar with being, um, born again, having received the Holy Spirit. We know that we are a vessel. We are a vessel of God's Holy Spirit, <clears throat> completely changed, made into something new, even though we might still look the same, might still sound the same, we might be the same age. God says we are completely new. He doesn't see us as that old person anymore. He only sees us as this new creation, made pure, washed clean, start from scratch, and working, this person that he sees, working and wanting to serve him, to serve him. And uh, that's all that matters to him, that this person, this, may, this new vessel, having been filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, continues on in wanting to serve him. And there are many, many ways in which we, in which we do that. Let's go to Matthew uh, chapter nine. <clears throat> oh, some of these I won't have you turn to. And if you don't get there by the time I start speaking, I apologize because we're on a time crunch. But Matthew chapter nine, verse 16 says, has, has a parable here of the old versus the new. It says, no man uh, put a piece of new cloth on an old garment for that which is uh, put in to fill it up, taketh from the garment, and the rent or the tear is made even worse. So he's just talking about fabrics here. You got old fabric, you got new fabric. What you want is 
if you already have old fabric, use old fabric and that kind of, just making a comparison that you're not going to take something old and just patch it up with something new. It has to be a completely new thing. In verse 17, neither do men put new wine, which is a simply, uh, essentially grape juice, it's not really fermented yet, put new wine into old bottles, the old bottles, or they had wine skins that were sort of, you know, thin and, and, and ready to go, maybe rigid from its previous use. You put, um, it says, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish, but they put new wine, so this is talking about the spirit and everything that the Lord's given us into new bottles were made new and both in this way are preserved. Both are saved and preserved. Um, another scripture in Corinthians, you don't have to turn to it. It says, um, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So we've received this Holy Spirit. We've got this wine that was poured in. We, the Bible talks about the oil and the wine being poured in. Um, you know, got a little bit of fat with the oil, a little bit of sugar with the wine, and they symbolize all kinds of things. Health, longevity, joy, all of these things that they symbolize. This is what was poured into us and what was given to us by the Spirit. But I also want to bring out, although the Spirit gives us this power, we have to use it to take advantage of that power. We have to put the key in the ignition and start it up and go. As we brought out before, I think in the talk and some of the uh, other things that were mentioned here today, if the word is a lamp to our feet lighting the way, we have to still walk the way. The Spirit's not just going to do it for us. Uh, if we have things that linger in our new creation, in our new man, uh, things that we fight and we do, sin still happens when you're born again. It's still going to happen. You're not going to think every thought in your head in alignment with what, how God thinks. You can't. The natural mind is opposite to God. So every, almost every thought you make, every minute of the day, you will sin. The difference now is all of that is being looked at instead of the dirty robes, instead of the dirty sin that God used to see, because you because Jesus has died for us and we've entered into it, <clears throat> he's got this filter on, I guess. You know, he's continually forgiving us for the, for the mishaps, for the missteps, for the mistakes that we make. The only thing that we're required to do is to get back up and continue to walk. Continue to walk forward. When it says elsewhere in the scriptures, when the Lord comes back, he wants to find us, it says, so doing, so doing, doing the work, doing what he has called us to do. We will mess up. We will fall down. We will have the thoughts of the natural mind, but we now have the spirit to overcome all of those things and to get back up with no self-condemnation because God has given us away. And that is why we are so thankful for what God has done. We didn't deserve it. To, to be coming into this relationship. We didn't deserve his help along the way. We don't deserve his help along the way, but he gives it to us. Like children being raised by their father, continual grace, continual mercy. Now, that's not for us to go and do whatever we want, however we want. The Bible talks about that. We don't willfully just go and, oh, well, God will forgive me. He knows our heart. He knows our heart. So if we're doing that, he'll know. But we will fall and we need to get back up. Um, the, uh, the spirit is our helper. Uh, one scripture in Corinthians says this, the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. We're the prophets. It's subject to us. It's here for us. It is our helper. It won't drag us kicking and screaming. You know, we have to put in the work of reading, of praying in that spirit that we were given and looking to the word uh, wanting to know his direction for us. Let's, um, we can turn here. I'll probably, I, I won't do that much more. <laughs> First Corinthians, I'll read. First Corinthians 12, verse 7, it says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Manifestation of the Spirit. How does the Spirit show up in our lives? And what is it for? It's 
for our profit. It's given to us for our profit, for our betterment, for our improvement, that we make it to the end. It's our helper is one of the names for the, for the Holy Spirit. The comforter, the helper, whoops, a little live here, all kinds of things. It says uh, in verse eight, for, for uh, to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom, to another, uh, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, uh, to another, discerning of spirits, to another, uh, diverse kinds of tongues. We know that uh, tongues and um, your, your prayer language can change. I don't know if it means that or, or the natural tongues here, but the next one is talking about spiritual things. Uh, interpretation of tongues. Now, all these things I just mentioned is not for this one's for you, this one's for you, this one's for you, because we hear people that go to other religious organizations and they say, I have the spirit of wisdom. Okay. The Lord gives wisdom to anyone who asks. Anyone who asks. Is it only one of us that is supposed to have faith? The spirit of faith? No. Every one of us has every one of these things. Especially if you seek it and you ask for it, but given to us by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of this Holy Spirit, the things that it can do for us to help us, these are some of the things. But all these worketh the, um, that one and selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. And I want to point out as he will, meaning your will, meaning what do you want to do? How are you going to serve the Lord? How can you take what you were given and serve the Lord? You think, oh, I'm not that knowledgeable or I don't know about healing, or I don't know about this, or I don't know about that. I don't know if I can preach the gospel. I don't know if I can play some music. I don't, whatever you want to do, the Lord will empower you to do it through the Holy Spirit. That's what he's talking about here. <clears throat> um, okay. I will, uh, I will read out of Isaiah. Um, Isaiah is in, in the Old Testament. I'm going to do chapter uh, six, uh, verse eight. The Lord's calling out, and he said, um, there was a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Uh, and then I said, Isaiah said, here am I, send me. This is an example of the attitude that we all need to have in the Lord. Whatever we think we're supposed to be doing, the Lord says, hey, look, here's a need. Here's a need now. Who's going to do it? Who's going to go preach my gospel here where you are now? Who is going to go and talk to that person here where you are now? Who is going to call that brother and sister now and feed his sheep? As Jesus said over and over again, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Our job, preach the gospel. Our home, feed the sheep. It's like two different, you have a, you have a work life, you have a home life. This is our home. These are our brothers. These are our sisters. These are our mother and father and all those things. This is our home. And what do you do with your family? You take care of them. You help them. You encourage them. You make sure that they're going to make it with you. And you work together as a team to do what? The job. What's the job? To preach the gospel. Um, I'll just read in, in Mark 16. He said, he said to them, this is our vocation, our job, our commandment from the Lord. What are we to be doing? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized, and believe doesn't just mean, yes, I think that's true. Believe means to adhere to, to trust in, and to obey. If you look up the word in the meanings, he that believes and is baptized will be saved, and he that believes not shall be damned, and these signs will follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils, they will speak with new tongues, as, as we know. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now this doesn't mean that we go out and we tempt the Lord by intentionally drinking poison or intentionally picking up poisonous snakes. 
The Bible talks about that too. We don't tempt the Lord. Jesus, uh, when he was doing his 40 days of, of temptation and, and uh, the opposition came to him and said, hey, just uh, throw yourself off this cliff. God will save you. God says you won't be hurt. And Jesus said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do, you don't tempt the Lord. So we don't tempt the Lord, but we have scriptures here of, of healing, of protection, and of the sign of having received the Holy Spirit um, with speaking in tongues. So we have our vocation and we have our job. And Jeremiah said, here I am, send me. And what did he tell Jeremiah? Not Isaiah, not Jeremiah, Isaiah, sorry. What did he tell Isaiah to do? He said, go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. You're hearing the words, but you're not understanding them. See ye indeed, but perceive not. And he said, make the heart of this people fat or, or heavy and, you know, just like uh, make them understand that this is a, a serious thing. And make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears. So this is the other option. And understand with their heart and convert and be healed. This is what he's having him do, to go and tell everybody, to go do the job, to go be his representative in this world and be the light of this world and the salt of this earth to tell people about the salvation that they can have, about the help that they can have. And he said, he said, uh, how long? How long do you want me to do this for? Like the next hour? Uh, the rest of today and he answered and he said until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate so basically he's saying this is your job until no one is left this is your job does that mean we travel all around we stand on street corners with signs looking like a crazy person no no one's going to listen to you they're going to think you're crazy right um we we preach the gospel we got friends we got family we we go out sometimes we knock on doors we meet people online we do whatever it is that we do that's our job that's our vocation and we bring people into the to the inn we find them out there wounded hurt a, a vessel that has been marred and we bring them in so they can be made new completely new into a, a, a vessel that is filled with the helper the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. I'll leave it there.